Um, hi, hello, I Clem. I know I thanks a lot for joining me for this interview for uh, the new agenda. Uh, both Clem and I are two postdoctoral researchers at the Center for Neurodevelopmental Disorders at KCL. They are two amazing people, two amazing women and researchers. And that's not just because I know them personally and I'm biased, but because they truly are. And um, so we're gonna have a really informal chat talking about your journey, your experiences, your research, and your opinion. Uh, so my first question for you is to talk a bit about uh, um, uh, yourself, your position at the center, and how uh, you, got, you got where you are. Um, Clem, if you want to start. Yeah, sure. Um, so as uh, Sarah just said, I'm a postdoc in the center. Um, and my work at the moment uh, focuses on, on how the, the brain cells, how the neurons get wired during development uh, and how this miswiring can lead to uh, neuropsychiatric disorders. Um, I'm French. Uh, I grew up in Paris. I did my undergrad degree in biology, a little bit in Paris, a little bit in Brittany. Um, and then during this degree, I spent six months doing my first ever lab internship that was in London. Um, I loved the job. I loved the, the thinking, the experiments, the times at the bench, the nothing is working, the but this is great. Uh, exactly, the excitement, the atmosphere, the, the lovely colleagues. Um, and so that motivated me to move on to a PhD. Uh, that I did in Paris, where I worked on how early experiences can sculpt uh, brain development and, and, and learning. Um, and then I moved to London five years ago to start my postdoc in the center. Exciting. <laughs> Hello, Jeremy. <laughs> and what about you, Noel? Well, I'm a postdoctoral researcher in the same labs as uh, Glenn is working. Um, my project um, is focused on how interneuron dysfunction during development can be related to schizophrenia, specifically. So in the lab, there are many different um, lines of investigation, and specifically claim me working in the part of the diseases. Um, so yeah, the projects are similar, but not. As always, this is one of the beauties of the science, that uh, there is so broad that uh, there is space for for everyone to, to work in. And well, I am, I am Spanish. I'm from a, a home, a small town in the northwest of Spain. And I moved to, to Madrid for a finishing the degree and then the master and also my PhD. And they, my initial years as postdoc, I uh, made them in, in Madrid too. So I like big cities a lot. Uh, that's what's one of the reasons that, that it moved me to, to move to London, actually. Well, almost two years ago, it was one year and a half um, ago. But of course, uh, the reason for moving here was uh, the research and, uh, and the career. So I did my PhD studying uh, adult neurogenesis and how newborn neurons in the adult can integrate in, in a pre-existing circuitry. And since the very beginning, I was amazed by this kind of plasticity that allows the brain to modify, uh, even when it's adult and everything is settled uh, with new, new things and experiences. So after that, I decided to move uh, to study uh, more specifically how the brain is wired uh, during development. And, and that's how I end up here in such an amazing place to study that because the Center for um, Development uh, is the proper place to, to do that. Indeed, it's like an amazing environment and yeah. really exciting. Um, you already mentioned a bit about that, but what is the main things that you enjoy, that you like about your job? Noe, do you want to start? Yeah, sure. Well, I think that the, the part that I like the most is the novelty every day, because I don't like to do, do repeated works all the time. And in science, every day is different. Even when the, the routine can seem similar from day to day, because the protocols are what they are, there is something different every day. And also the question behind is different. This is frustrating most of the time because things uh, cannot <laughs> work. work. Exactly. But uh, this is also what I like the most, because you don't know. You wake up in the morning, go to the lab, and who knows what is going to happen that day. 
can be many things, but never boring. And I hate to be boring at work. So this is perfect. No, that's that's a great point. Actually, my, my answer was was obviously in, in similar things. I think what I like the most is the the constant um, intellectual stimulation. So I guess it's it's quite similar to what you said. You know, it's it's okay. You you have an idea. You put up hypothesis. You set up experiments to validate your hypothesis. That's already quite a lot, right? And you know, thinking about that is already not straightforward. And then you get the data from the hypothesis. If they validate it from from the results, you get the data from the results. If they validate your hypothesis, that's fantastic, and you celebrate straight away with your lab mates. Um, if they don't, then you just have to start again, try to understand why. And was, was that maybe because your hypothesis was not 100% correct? Whether you did something wrong with your experiments, whether you, you know. And so this is kind of, it keeps you on your toes all the time. And I find that fantastic. And I guess related to that is also the fact that you're working with other people. It's not, it's, it's, it's really not a very lonely job. I mean, not in our lab anyway. Um, and I think, the, the, the discussion with colleagues is, is and with also with other people from the department is just making your science better because it's going to improve your project, it's going to improve your hypothesis, it's going to improve the experiments that you're going to do. Um, so the, the whole scientific discussions with people around you is, is something that I really enjoy as well. Yeah, I, yeah, I completely agree with, like, with you for like all your points. And uh, I have one more question. Um, actually two more questions for you. Uh, so we talked about like positive aspects of your job, but also I would like to know what is the thing that you find the most challenging in research? Uh, well, um, in addition to the, sorry, in, in, in addition to the frustration that Noe mentioned, <laughs> and I think it's important. Um, I think, it, unfortunately, I think for me, it's, it's the constant worry about funding um, I think it's something that, and it, it's gonna, you know, it's it's a bit far from what you would think about research, but unfortunately, it's a very big part of our lives, uh, and it starts quite early when when you start your your PhD, you're looking for scholarships, and you can't really start a PhD without a scholarship, and then it tends to get only worse and worse as as your career progress progresses, and I think that's a shame because I mean I understand why, of course, right? I mean, but it's it's a shame because it takes time away from all this, you know, thinking that we just mentioned and, and it just hampers the, the progress on, on the on the research uh, projects. So I would say that's that's my most kind of frustrating thing about the current way we do research. Yeah, for me it's kind of similar because the, the small things of the day by day is, yeah, it's just part of the job, it's not actually um, a major problem. But for me it's, uh, in line what Clem said, is the uncertainty of what is going to happen, the, what I'm going to do next, what is going to be the next step. And every step is kind of short, if you think on the term, because it's two, three, four years, uh, every step of the career for saying, and then you have to start to think what I'm going to do next, uh, what I'm going to uh, find, the, find, the funding, um, what is the, the best for me, uh, I cannot fail because if I fail in this step, then I'm not going to be prepared for the next one and that could be the end of my career, but it's very dramatic, but oh, yeah. it's like, it's great. Yeah, exactly, so like it, I feel that every single thing I am doing, like in this big road, not the day by the science, but the decisions of uh, where I'm going to do my next uh, step of the research makes a lot of, makes a lot. Uh, it's very important on, on on the career, and I don't know if it should be that much. And it's, it's yeah, mainly because of the funding, and because if you fail or in one of the steps are not enough success, or in the mo you're not enough success in that specific moment, uh, then you're not going to be able to move on. And yeah, that's that's the worst for me. No, yeah, I agree. Like as you said, also as a PhD student. It's like fundamental to have funding just to start, like to have a position as a student in a in a lab, and being able to carry on like your your PhD. But yeah, I guess as a postdoc is even more important because otherwise, like you have like a specific amount of time, like with the fundings, and a lot depends on the results so also on publications. And some, sometimes it's not so straightforward to have publication from like research that lasted two years 
and then you like continuously looking for more funding so like trying to get publication then publication to get funding it's like this never ending circle and i think i think it's important what what noe was mentioning about i think it's i think it's important to highlight the fact that this makes lives of of phd students and and postdocs and i'm sure pis as well it makes lives very stressful yeah and um, it's a shame and you know i mean I'm sure it's the same in other jobs, but we are very passionate people. I think scientists, we only do this job because it's our passion. There is really no other reason why you would do this job. It's just uh, the best job ever for us. Um, and it's just this additional pressure is, is pushing us, I think, in the wrong direction uh, and taking away a little bit of this passion. And I think that's, that's really a shame. I don't know if that was your idea, Noe, also as this kind of Yes, I, I have the feeling all the time in every step from my career since the very beginning, since the, yeah, the master of the PhD, that the, the better times for me are always in the middle of, yes. of things, of every step. Because in the beginning, you are like setting up and trying to figure out what you are going to do. In the, in the last, in the finish, it is terrible because you are thinking in the next step and yeah, you are not enjoying the moment. In the middle is when you really enjoy uh, the science you are doing and you cannot or you can avoid uh, to think a lot on the future I hate when somebody uh, asks me what do you want to do after let me live in peace <laughs> I'm living in this moment <laughs> yes because it's when you can focus and enjoy the science you are doing that is what this is our work actually the all the rest is surviving well, it's part of the work as well right it's not uh, that it's only this but yeah it's the part that I don't like the surviving in the world of science yeah. Uh, so like as I said like it's it's really challenging like to like move on and um, keep on like working in uh, academia spe specifically at senior levels I would say and so do you have like any idea like possible action that can be taken to improve uh, in like in a positive way like female representation at senior levels? Them? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so I was thinking about this question when you when I mean, this is this is something that we, we think about constantly, I think. Um, and I guess we're, we're luckier than the women who were in our position 20 years ago, because the situation has improved, there is no denying it. But it's absolutely no time to be complacent, because I think the moment we let go, we're going to easily into the previous situation. Um, and I can think of three major points. Uh, of course, there's there's so many, and these are the points I was thinking about are more kind of global and not like a day-to-day -day actions, let's say. Um, but for me, the first one would be keeping the quotas in place um, in you know key key committees, uh, decision-making bodies, um, and ideally push these quotas to maintain. Um, the female representations. People were against the quotas when that was put in place, not in science, right, in, in, in business and um, as well. And uh, they said, oh, we'll, we'll never find enough women, you know, talented um, to, to, put, to put in these positions. And actually, it turns out that they did find them. Uh, surprise, surprise. And, and so we actually know it works and we know it, it pushes the female representation. So I, I know that's something that I think should definitely stay in place um, until we, we reach these kind of gender blind uh, situation uh, hopefully hopefully soon enough um, my second point was to um, and again these are all things that are already in place right but um, to keep on mentoring women um, to to make sure that they can manage their career uh, and the work-life balance that they know how to brand themselves um, stuff like negotiate their salary for instance um, but I think to me it's it's more to show them that, they have what it takes to be leaders. You know, it's it's not something you you already have it. You have these qualities. You have so so just go ahead and do it because you you can do it. And I think this needs for some people a little bit of external inputs to just you know convince you that this is the case and that you can do it. Um, and the last point would be a more uh, early on a more a, a global effect is just to to educate boys and girls early on about, you know, for instance, training on unconscious bias that we all have, there's no denying it. Um, and, and 
these kind of things. As if if we educate boys and girls early on, then we improve the situation early on, uh, and then we can hope for a, a real, yeah, gender blind uh, uh, science in in a few years. Um, and all of these points, obviously, and I mean, we're talking about science and women in science, but this is something that's extremely important, also outside of science and and all my female friends who are working in business and finance are also feeling the same way and the, the tricks are the same. So I think if we progress in, in one part of the profession, you know, in, in one profession, that can also instruct um, uh, the others. Yeah, well, I think that was a very good summary. I don't have a lot of things to add to that. No, I, I, yeah, I agree with all of, with everything Clem said. Um, I think that luckily for, for us and for the world, uh, now the situation of the women in science has improved a lot compared to, I don't know, 30 years ago, for example. So we are not facing the, challenging, the challenges now that uh, people who was, uh, and women were um, yeah, facing time ago. And also now there are um, a lot of women prepared uh, to occupy the, the, the higher uh, steps in science, not the higher positions. Uh, so this is not the problem. So the, there are uh, women already prepared for that now in, in these days, but to, to be at senior, at senior level. The problem is more the structure, I think, and, and the, the social part of everything. And, and yeah, because when, when you start to move on, the career move on, move on, um, then there is a moment uh, in which you have to go through many of all of the all, all of what uh, Clem said that it is an unconscious bias that kind of yeah things seem the, the same but they are not and it's very yeah. subtle to realize why and why did you don't get to a specific place and you can think why well, cannot be because I am a woman but then it partially can be and then apart from all of what she said I'm not gonna repeat it it's the part uh, of um, trying to balance personal and professional life. So to me, I see many of my friends and, and yeah, the reference I have in at, at senior levels and whatever, that is not uh, that easy still in science. And I know that it's not only science, it's also other words, but yeah, talking about science here, as it's so demanding and so competitive at some point, um, to balance the professional and personal life is, is very difficult. And most of the times it's, it's not very easy for women specifically because yeah, I think I have the feeling that men have this part more more easy to go through, and for women, then, yeah, there is not because yeah, you cannot uh, say so it's kind of not allowed to not uh, spend time on the work for spending time uh, in your personal life even when it's partial. So at some point, I see uh, uh, yeah, many people just taking the decision or I'm going to move and. For a scientific career, I'm gonna put everything on here, or this is not worth anymore, and I prefer to live in a in a different way. Of course, in the in the middle, there is everything, but uh, I see a, a point of decision of seeing what I'm gonna do. I want to fight all of, all of my life in this part, or I want to balance and have something else. And should not be like that. So at some point, it should be possible to have both. And yeah. I don't know how specifically this could be done, but um, some yeah, changes in the hierarchy of the science on how it's done that allows um, yeah, I don't know, more help uh, in the personal I life. Think it's also, sorry, if I may, I think it's something, it, it, something that came to me when you were talking. I think something that would be nice also, and that seems extremely naive to say, um, is to have a kinder culture because people are very judgmental. Uh, again, this is a human trait, right? <laughs> and so, you know, if you're a woman and you decide to have kids, then you're going to be judged because you decide to have kids. And if you're a woman and you decide not to have kids, then you're going to be judged because oh, you know, you're a career woman and this is terrible. And this comes from men and women the same, right? So I think this is something that we need to work on. And it, it seems ridiculous and naive, but it is so important to not feel judged and, and develop this kinder culture and environment and that will make people more comfortable you know that's the tiny steps that that we can take i'm sure and and work ourselves uh on on that um yeah like i think there is like a big component of like kind of social pressure 
like having like this need to being able to show to prove the others that you're worth it that you got in your position because of your merits and not because of like chance good luck and like feeling to always uh, had to prove yourself and yeah it's it's partially i think it's a uh, social pressure like, that's interesting because sorry i keep interrupting no 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 <laughs> um, no, that, that's interesting because that thing of proving yourself as a woman, you also have to prove yourself as a mother, you know, I mean, that's yeah. expected from you. And I, I mean, I think this is fantastic for people who want kids, but we have to be more open for people who want to live completely different lives. Uh, and I'm not even talking about the non-binary people who should also be included in this kind of conversation. It's yeah, as you said, social pressure, it's, it's very difficult to, to get rid of that. But again, it's, it's also um, the responsibility of the individuals. And I would say it starts with ourselves is like unconscious bias. I'm not going to say I don't have unconscious bias. I do every day, you know. So the more we force ourselves and we, and we work on this ourselves, the more likely we are going to have a nicer environment uh, to work in. Yeah, yeah. completely agree. Yeah, but the, I agree in general that the, the social change is what is going to lead the, the, the change now because the women are in the position now to, to have senior positions in science. It's just the um, push of the social part of it to, to let us know, all, all of us, that we can do it, that it's not going to be detrimental for the rest of our lives and that's going to be a good choice and yeah, that's it. So we are in this part in which we lack a little bit of references. No, we hope that the, for the next generations, they are going to have much more reference to look in and yeah, I know that uh, it's possible to have everything in life you want as in other jobs. Yeah, yeah there's going to be a lot, a lot of inspiration for like future generation and models to look at and being like aware that you can do it. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you so much for joining me in this uh, chat and for this interview and bringing us uh, in this journey through your career and your life. And thanks a lot for listening to us. And bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, Sarah.